Did you know? Even with hundreds of episodes, the Pokemon anime still has many mysteries in it, with one mystery happening before the first episode even started. The very first opening to the Pokemon anime is one of the most beloved, and features almost all recognizable characters from the series, except for one. Many have speculated about the identity of this character. Some theorize because the opening is comprised of almost 100% main characters that maybe this character was a female character. Blue, green in English, but was dropped from the anime for unknown reasons. The character does, however, share an uncanny likeness to the NPC Pokemon trainer Lass. But why would a random trainer be featured in the opening? The answer stems from the fact that many English speakers were not introduced to the original Japanese theme. The original theme, Aim to be a Pokemon Master, is much more literal in its verses and the lines are roughly translated as, I'll get Pokemon, even if through fire, in water, on the grass, in forests, in the dirt, through the clouds, and under that girl's skirt. <laughs> Another point of confusion and interest was in Episode 2, Pokemon Emergency. The Pokemon anime has been known to follow its own rules regarding Pokemon, movesets, and world lore. On the wall in the Pokemon Center, four legendary Pokemon are shown. Articuno, Moltres, Zapdos, and Arcanine. Arcanine's inclusion seems odd as it is not considered a legendary. However, a number of Pokedex entries refer to it as a legendary Chinese Pokemon. Its inclusion as a legendary on the tablet is more than likely a reference to Arcanine's influence, the Komainu, a lion-like creature which guards Shinto shrines. Komainu themselves are based on the Chinese Shi guardian statues, which connect back to the Chinese legendary reference in RK9's Pokedex entries. Speaking of the origin of legendaries, Pokemon, the first movie, didn't originally have an origin to its legendary antagonist. The original version of Mewtwo Strikes Back did not include the short known as The Birth of Mewtwo. The Birth of Mewtwo itself is adapted from a radio drama of the same name, written by head Pokemon writer at the time, Takashi Shudo. Originally played over a five-week period, the radio drama told the same story as the Shortwood, and led up to the premiere of Mewtwo Strikes Back in Japanese theaters in 1998. Shudo said that the prologue was also not originally intended to be there but was added when the episode Electric Soldier Porygon caused the show to go on hiatus. The version that does include the short at the beginning, as well as CGI changes to various scenes, the Kanzenban version, was the version that made it to the U.S. almost. While the Kanzenban version was made to be used later in North America, many English speakers from that time may not remember parts of the added short because only certain parts of the short were used initially. The parts that were cut, which did eventually show up in later home video releases, establishes that Mewtwo is a confused being searching for his identity, along with a cloned version of Dr. Fuji's daughter, Ai, and cloned versions of the Kanto starter Pokemon. Because of the removal of this footage and the many changes done to localize Mewtwo as a boastful antagonist, many key points of this central theme were lost. For example, in the original Japanese dialogue, Mewtwo asked Dr. Fuji if Mew is his mother or father, to which Fuji replies that he could say both, but could also say neither. Mewtwo then asks if he was created by God to which Fuji replies that only humans and gods can create beings, and that Mewtwo was created through science. Another prominent change in tone is Mew itself. Instead of emphasizing the power of true heart to Mewtwo, 
Mew almost coldly tells Mewtwo that only the original Pokemon are real and that they could never lose to clones. Did you know that Pokemon almost had real-world dinosaurs in it? Takashi Shudo has been known to have a number of interesting ideas regarding the Pokemon franchise and the lore behind it. For the third movie, Emperor of the Crystal Tower, Entei, Shudo wanted people in the Pokemon world to discover real dinosaur bones of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, who Shudo said would be reminiscent of the one from Jurassic Park. The reason he wanted to pursue this, Shudo said, was to add a bit of realism to the Pokemon world. And though the producers were not on board, he did not feel as though it would break the world of Pokemon by having something from the real world predate them. Shudo is also known for his infamous end to the Pokemon anime, as he saw it. Somewhat similar to Mewtwo's clone army, or End's plan in later installments, Shudo had the Pokemon rebel against their masters, with Pikachu as the leader of the Pokemon, and Meowth acting as Pikachu's mouthpiece for the humans. Shudo said it was like the Roman-era Spartacus slave rebellion. Once they had the chance, the Pokemon would challenge their trainers in one final battle. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Now, are you a boy or a girl? And for that matter, what's my grandson's name? Hmm? Well, anyway, where did you know anime? The anime trivia resource. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and share this video with all of your Pokemon trainer friends. Bye-bye.